If your shoulders feel tight, restricted, or they're not moving as freely as they should, then use this technique and you're gonna be able to release them so that they can move and do what you want them to do. Hey, what's up? Coach E here from Precision Movement. And today I've got a great technique to help you to release your shoulders so they move more freely and they're more mobile. And this is a technique that I learned from Dr. Erin Boynton, who's a friend of mine. And she's probably one of the top orthopedic surgeons specifically specializing in shoulders in the world, definitely in Canada, but also in the world. And she spent 10 years as the team surgeon for the Toronto Blue Jays. And if you can imagine baseball, well, those guys, their shoulders have a lot of issues. So she's got a wealth of experience and I'm really, really happy to be able to help to provide that experience to you. So this technique is a, similar to some of the techniques that I share in my courses and programs in terms of active self myofascial release. And a lot of times people do foam rolling, self myofascial release, but it's very passive. You're just moving the body around or you're ripping into tissue and the body and the muscles aren't active as well. And that's something that I bring to self myofascial release and you'll find in this technique that improves your results. Okay, so what you need is a lacrosse ball or self myofascial release ball. And if you don't have one, look on Amazon, Google it, you'll be able to find them, they're everywhere. And if you don't have one, you wanna get started right now, you can use a baseball, something hard, a golf ball. Be resourceful, figure it out, okay? Where you're gonna put this is in the posterior shoulder. So in this area, so armpit, right behind the armpit, and we're gonna to move to different areas. What you're gonna do is get over and put some weight into the ball. Now you can change how much weight you put into the ball depending on how tender it is. And some people, it's super tender back there. So put your weight into the ball, and the first thing you're gonna do, you can do three movements, is protraction and retraction of the scapula. So slide forward, Slide back, retraction, slide forward, keep the elbow straight, go nice and slow and breathe. I was rushing a little bit there because it hurts. Slide forward, keep the weight in, and you're just gonna release some of that tissue in the back there. Okay, so that's protraction, retraction. Next, we're gonna go shoulder flexion, extension. So sweeping the arm across the ground. Again, go slow and under control, breathe. Let's do three sweeps. Trust me, this hurts. There's three. And then finally, we're gonna do rotation. So think of the humerus, the upper arm bone. That is where the rotation occurs. Pin that tissue down, put your body weight into the ball. And now we're releasing the rotator cuff tendons from the posterior deltoid, from the lats, from the teres major. There's three, okay? And then you just simply repeat in a different area. We can go down the body more. You're gonna get a little more teres major, a little more lat, less posterior deltoid. Same exact thing. Put some weight down into it as much as you can without tensing up your body too much. Because if you tense up your body too much, the muscles will contract there and they won't be able to release because they'll be contracted. So got some weight in there, protraction, retraction. Slow and controlled, breathing. Three times. And then we're gonna sweep, shoulder flexion going up overhead, shoulder extension. See how I'm just kind of manipulating my body a little bit, rotating towards the floor just to maintain the pressure down into the ball, because that's the key. Now we're really releasing the lat here, okay? And then just bend the elbow slightly so you can get good rotation going on and release the rotator cuff. Release and activate the rotator cuff. about three times each. It's not set in stone, but 
three is good. Okay, so you'd repeat that in three to five different areas in the back, all around here. You can move it all around, just experiment. If there's somewhere that's really particularly tender, as long as it's not burning, causing like a tingling or a burning sensation, which means that you're probably on a nerve, then go for it. It's gonna hurt, it's supposed to hurt. And if it hurts, that's good because as you do it, it's gonna release, feel looser and not hurt as much. And then you're gonna have greater mobility and freedom of movement of the shoulder. Okay, so this is something, active self-myofascial release is something that I recommend you do on a daily basis for at least a week, up to two, three, even four weeks on a daily basis is kind of the max that you're gonna tap it out at that point. And then after that, two to three times a week, just like I've prescribed here, three to five different areas, three of each of the movements, and that's gonna keep the tissue gliding nicely, keep stuff unstuck, and help you to move freely and without pain, okay? So this technique, specifically I learned from Dr. Erin Boynton, like I said, and she's super knowledgeable and I'm very, very happy to be working with her. And it's also a technique that I use extensively in terms of active self myofascial release in all of my courses. So if you have issues with the shoulders, then I suggest you check out my shoulder control course where you'll find techniques like this, as well as my dissociation techniques and range expansion techniques to improve your mobility and your functional integration techniques to take what you've built up in terms of mobility and activation and integrate that into movement patterns that you use in the gym, sport, and life. So you can check that out. I'll post links in the video and in the description and at the end of this video, and you can learn more about that course. Okay, so thanks again for checking out this technique. Hope it really helps you and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.